Hey guys, Josh here today. We are here to review the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix, one of the most enthralling Formula 1 races in quite a while, and certainly a, a very, very historical one. So much to talk about today, and I think I might have to make a couple of videos talking about this race because there was just so much going on. I mean, of course, spoiler alert, I mean, if you haven't seen it, or you haven't heard the result, you, you just need to go and watch it, but basically, Max Verstappen then took his maiden Grand Prix victory, the Mercedes collided as well, and uh, just so much action throughout the field, we didn't even see what was going on outside of the top four, but there was a lot of action further down as well, and some really, really interesting teammate squabbles as well, which I'll come on to a bit later, but um, I think what I'll do is I'll probably make a separate video talking specifically about the Hamilton and Rosberg incident, and also about Max Verstappen and the future of him, and uh, you know, is he the next Ayrton Senna, is he the next, uh, you know, superstar, where I think that's pretty obvious, but uh, you know, just how good really is Max Verstappen, I think that's definitely a video we need to do, and definitely talking about next year, and uh, how the driver market's going to play out, but uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about Max Verstappen then. I mean, what, what an emphatic win, of course. Two-stop strategy for Verstappen and Raikkonen. It was just so enthralling seeing how, you know, those strategies were going to play out. I didn't think that Verstappen and Raikkonen would be able to get to the end, but as soon as Vettel, like, pitted um, very, very early for his for his final stop, his, you know, his last pit stop was way too early. It was only a couple of laps after Raikkonen and Verstappen had come into the pits for their final stop, so really, Vettel didn't, although he did do a three-stopper, he didn't really get the benefits of doing a three-stopper, Ricardo went longer and should, you know, Vettel should have done what Ricardo had, uh, you know, was doing, um, but of course, that did give Vettel the jump on Ricardo, but it then compromised both him and Ricardo in terms of them um, and their chances of the victory, because it basically meant that Vettel was going very slowly, and then he was just holding up Ricardo, so... It was a bit of a shame we didn't get four for the lead at the end, um, and I was really hoping that things would kick off and maybe Raikkonen would get past Verstappen or at least challenge him and we'd see a good fight between those two, and we'd see Vettel and Ricardo really going at it as well, but really, I can't complain because it was just a fantastic race, and... Um, yeah, just just great to see Verstappen up there. I mean, I'm, I'm not his biggest fan, but uh, like I mentioned actually in my last video where I was talking with um, Aaron and Jake about, uh, you know, this kind of switch that Red Bull are doing, and they were very kind of against it, but I was saying, no, you know, give it a chance. I think that Verstappen will prove everyone wrong, and to be honest, he absolutely has, and um, he's really made Helmut Marko and the whole Red Bull look, you know, kind of the whole Red Bull company just look like a really, really smart bunch of people, really, because they've made a, a fantastic move that has really helped them. And to be honest, you know, I think this is definitely another video I have to make as well, you know, do, do Red Bull have a realistic chance of the championship? Do they have a realistic chance of more wins later on in the year? And it's not just because of this race, but also because of that Canadian Renault engine upgrade, which we should see next week, or I think it's this week, actually, in the uh, the post finish Grand Prix test course. So, yeah, it will be this week. We'll see that Renault upgrade and see how much of a difference that makes, because if it does make a big difference, then maybe Red Bull can challenge uh, Mercedes and Ferrari on a, on a more consistent basis, and that will be something that I really, really do want to see, because, to be honest, you could tell that Ferrari were quicker than Red Bull, so major, major, very, very good result for Red Bull. And Verstappen, of course, then took the win. Kimi Raikkonen coming on second. I thought he drove a really, really good race. I mean, another question as well arising from this is, you know, is, is Raikkonen the lead Ferrari driver now? Has he done a better job this season? I think, you know, Vettel, of course, is probably still quicker, but... You know, this weekend, Raikkonen out-qualified Vettel, and he pretty much out-raced him as well. I mean, Vettel was just kind of struggling for pace um, at, at certain parts of the race, particularly in the second half of the race, on that final stint. He was closing in on Verstappen and Raikkonen, but couldn't quite make the inroads, and I think that was probably mainly due to a bad strategy, really. I think Ferrari have messed it up again, and this is an all-too-familiar tale, because we saw it in Australia, they messed up, and uh, I, I forgave them, really, for the Australia error. I mean, that's not really their fault because it was kind of a very kind of split second decision but they had kind of time in this race to think about it and uh, they really did mess it up they've kind of definitely cost Raikkonen and Vettel a win but particularly Vettel um, the, the full 25 points but Vettel set settling for third place and um, as you said on the podium this day does belong to Verstappen so you know, out of all the drivers, I think Verstappen or Raikkonen would have been the best possible victors for Formula 1, just, uh, you know, for producing a really good story. We've seen Vettel sneak wins when Mercedes have faulted, we've seen Ricardo sneak wins, but we haven't seen Raikkonen win a race since 2013, and we haven't seen Verstappen ever win a race, so... 
first race with Red Bull as well. It feels like he's been in there ages. It, it's very strange. I mean, it just kind of proved that they were completely right, and it proves that Verstappen is a championship winning material. And uh, although the strategy did play, I think, the biggest part, Verstappen's defensive skills as well did really. Um, prove that uh, he is a very, very good driver. And I think the main thing was that he was so calm, he didn't make any mistakes, really, and uh, very few lockups. So great job from Verstappen then. Outside the top four, then you had Valtteri Bottas, who nearly got past Ricardo at the end, but uh, of course, with Ricardo's puncture, Bottas had a chance, but uh, did have to settle for fifth place, which is very good, I think. Bottas, you know, of course, isn't going to get much of a look in, just like the rest of the guys, really. All the focus, of course, is going to be on Red Bull, Ferrari, and of course, Mercedes, but. Uh, Bottas drove a good race, I think he was comfortably ahead of his team at all weekend, didn't have much challenge really, Williams were comfortably the fourth quickest team, so I think they'll be very happy to come away with a fifth place finish, a two drops strategy for them. Carlos Sainz Jr., sixth place for him, what a great result, I mean, Carlos Sainz proving that he is definitely the best of the two Toro Rossa drivers, I feel, he's definitely done a really, really good job, you know, so far um, with Danny Fiat as a teammate, only one weekend uh, into their partnership, but he's already out-qualified and outraced him. So great job from Carlos Sainz, and that's a very, very valuable eight points. Also a great six points as well for Sergio Perez. He came home seventh just to manage to fend off Felipe Massa, who came from the back of the grid. Fantastic drive from Massa. Great strategy goal from Williams for once, which was uh, slightly strange. Their race pace actually looked pretty good to say this is the track that Williams struggle at. I think they're going to be very happy with fifth and eighth, and uh, although they weren't up there and they probably preferred uh, Mercedes to collide at the last race where they actually had a decent race car, I think fifth and eighth is a decent result for Williams and it helps them kind of consolidate their fourth place in the championship, which is very, very much, I think, where they are going to be finishing up at the end of the year. Sergio Perez then, great result for him, great result for Force India. Of course, we saw Nick Hülkenberg going out early on, but Perez, to be fair to him, was ahead of Hülkenberg all the way through the weekend, and Hülkenberg probably wouldn't have scored points, or if he would, it'd probably be only a 9 for a 10, so... Bit of a disappointment for Force India in that respect in terms of Hulkenberg, but they do move ahead of McLaren in the championship, I do believe, off the top of my head, of course, and uh, Button then was in ninth place. More points for McLaren in his first points of the season. Danny Fiat getting a point in the Toro Rosso. Not a bad effort from Fiat. I mean, it was a decent race for him. He was really held up, of course, by... Um, Vettel and Ricardo, and I think that Ricardo probably should have just let Fiat through and maybe Fiat could have had a go at uh, Vettel and then maybe you know, kind of pulled Ricardo with him I, I kind of do feel that, that that could have happened and that could have been an option, but maybe Red Bull should have explored, but uh, nonetheless, um, that would have probably actually only made it painful, more painful really, if Ricardo got a puncture, I mean imagine if Ricardo had got past Vettel was right behind Raikkonen and then got a puncture, that, that would have been pretty gutting, so I guess in that respect, they can't have too many regrets about that certain aspect of Ricardo's race, but certainly in terms of his strategy, I think there will be regrets for both Vettel and for Ricardo as well. But uh, 11th place then was Gutierrez, easily his best race of the season. We saw him racing for once, and that was really, really good to see. There was so much action going on, um, I'd probably say from about... Um, ninth place downwards, so it was just so much battling, which we didn't see because, of course, the battle at the front. We had an enthralling battle between the Saubers, the Renaults, and the Houses. This is the battle I expected to see at the start of the season, and we're finally starting to see it emerging more. Um, but coming out on top then was Gutierrez, great driving from him, he actually drove a really, really solid race, got past Grosjean as well, who had an absolute howler, he eventually retired, but of course did have a trip off into the gravel as well, and was just making mistakes left, right and centre, not happy with the balance of his Haas, and certainly he's not having a great season, don't let those first two races fu fuel, uh, fool you, you know, Grosjean's not enjoying his time at Haas, um, in terms of driving the Haas, but uh, it's certainly... Having better fortune than he would have done if he'd have stayed at Renault, who finished 13th from 14th. They were beaten by Marcus Ericsson, who once again just put in a, a great performance. Ericsson is such a good midfield driver, and uh, you know came out came home 12th today, and uh, that could be important for Sauber. I mean, if they don't score points this season, that 12th could be crucial and could keep them ahead of a manner who had an absolute howler of a race. Verline 16th. Harry Anto 17 from what's going on with Manor. I mean, they showed loads of promise at the start of the year. They showed promise that they might be able to get ahead of Sauber because, of course, they didn't bring any upgrades. Renault brought major upgrades and Sauber was still ahead of them. So great job from Ericsson. Palmer beat Magnussen as well. They tried out the hard compound tyre. Probably didn't really work out for them. Um, maybe could have got points. Maybe should have got points. But, uh, you know, could have, would have, should have. Um, Nasa then was 15, yeah, poor race from him really, we saw a failed move from Ericsson, but it didn't really matter because he still managed to finish head off Felipe Nasa, couldn't quite get Gutierrez at the end, 
Um, but yeah, Verline 16, Ferrand to 17. We had Grosjean, Alonso, Hulkenberg, and of course Rosberg and Hamilton retiring. It's the first time the two Mercedes have retired from a race, I want to say. Um, is that right? I think, yeah, I think it might be actually the first time we've seen both of them retire in this V6 era and maybe for the first time since probably 2012 or 2013. So what a stat that is for you guys and uh, what a great race. Um, like I said, there should be plenty of videos coming out. I'll try and record them all today because, of course, I've got exams um, this week and uh, probably a, a shortage of videos really over these next few weeks. But so much to talk about. So if I do get the chance, I will try and make more videos and... Uh, Definitely be very interested in hearing your guys' opinions on this race. You guys can let me know your early opinion as well on this Mercedes incident. But I didn't talk about it too much just because by the time you're listening to this uh, video, you probably already heard the you know the kind of decision from the stewards. So hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's been a fantastic race, and I'll see you guys in Monaco. It shouldn't be a great race in Monaco, but to be fair, I said that about Spain. And it's been a fantastic race. So uh, we'll see what happens in Monaco. It's probably going to be not the most exciting race. But of course it's Monaco. It's a great spectacle. And just maybe Red Bull can once again challenge for the victory. See you guys next time. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Goodbye.